Please note, the views and opinions expressed in this series are strictly those of the Shadowhunters Paranormal Investigation Team, and do not necessarily reflect or represent the views and opinions of other paranormal hunting groups or shows. The videos shown in this series are raw, unedited footage filmed by the Shadowhunters Paranormal Investigation Team. Due to the nature of the subject, please be advised that it may not be suitable for children under the age of 13. if it was in the room we were in. Well, exactly. No, I thought it was going to be loud when I came out here. Bye. figure um, wearing a suit and tie very well dressed kind of slicked back hair um, slicked back black hair fellow um, but when we'd go to take a look at him it was just kind of dissipates into the air um, a lot of the times we'd get these claims oh we saw that we saw this um, just kind of makes us chuckle um, you know James and I and, um, you know, we know, we know, uh, that's Windsor, Windsor Delgard. He was the owner and operator of the meat market and grocery store that used to be here. So we are all getting ready to, Sharon's got her boots. <laughs> We're all getting ready to drive over to the location with Greg driving. Do you use the automatic start in your car? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Fancy schmancy. You're still, you're still filming? Like a so we are here at movie. Terminus in oh. Lake Villa, Illinois. And we have everybody with us tonight. Sharon, Becca, Ashley, Kareen, Greg, Tony. 
Dan and Mike. And right now we are just setting up everything. So Sharon, yes, dear. how are you feeling about tonight? I'm feeling great and excited. I can't wait. Are you feeling anything in yes, here? Yes, definitely. Feeling a lot of in stuff? In the bathrooms and in the back hallways. Yeah, there's definitely something here. Do you want to take me back there and uh, explain kind of what you're feeling? Right now I'm feeling kind of like a nervous feeling okay and then the closer we get to back here it's more of a heavy heavy feeling All right, so we are here in Terminus Theater. We are starting our investigation. We have everybody here. So the first thing we're going to do is just kind of walk around the entire building at night, see how it is at night. Um, so this is kind of like what, like the waiting area or, okay. Um, if there is anybody here, we are going to be here for a couple hours with you. So. We are going to be here for a couple hours with you, so, uh, yeah, definitely let us know um, that you're here. We heard you like to randomly come up to people's faces. We don't have a problem with that. You can take the energy out of our equipment and stuff, but do not touch us. You can't touch us. Remember guys too, like if you start feeling like a cold chill or anything like that. Well, yeah, and here it's gone. Like, yeah, back there. So this is the whole main room. All right, we are now going into the, I want to say this right, Del Guard, Del Guard room. And then what was Delgard again? Here's one of them. Delgard was the other one. I believe that Delgard was the man who built the building in the first place. Okay. Delgard's first place. Perfect. Okay, that um, down at the end of the hallway are the two shadow figures right in your face. Green being a creeper. <laughs> You got the ladies' room. You got the men's room down here. We're in here. Can you give us a sign? You can come and uh, take a seat with us. You let us know that you're here. Is anybody here with us? You let us know. My name is Becca. My name is Sharon. My name is Nick. I'm Kareem. Nice to meet you. My name's Ashley. Tony. Hi. Mike. Mike. Hi. 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 Hi.
You already know Heidi. <laughs> yeah, right? There's AJ. Heidi and AJ let us in, so they trust us. We want you to trust us as well. We really would like to meet, to see you and meet you. Let us know that you're here. It was like a fleeting lip of like a man's cologne right in front of my face. And now it's gone. I don't think it's everybody in here even can't smell it right now. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I mean, character ideas and a masculine sense. I mean, I guess it could be both. You know, I, I don't know, but like, we got like a blatant whip of it, like walking, like right past my face. Becca's got a masculine smell of water. <laughs> You can pull up a chair and come and sit with us. Can you make one of the chairs move? Beg you. Why? Why is it that you want us to leave? Is there something wrong? Have we offended you in some way? We're sorry. Are you upset that we all know that you're here? We know that you exist. Prove to us that you're here. Show us a sign. Touch my meter here. Play with the flashlight on the floor. Give us some taps. New top. New top. Maybe then like was something you were talking about maybe? Now in this part. Every time before we do our investigation, we always do a prayer protection that is led by Greg Koss, and then we always do a it's kind of like a white light ceremony, but we play a certain song that kind of really helps us get into the mood and kind of relaxes us. During this portion, we were sitting in the makeup room, and then all of a sudden that music came on. Now there's a couple things you need to understand. When the music went on, one, the speaker was off. Two, before we start any investigation now, we put our phones on airplay mode, meaning there's no connection, there's no nothing, there's no internet, nothing's on there. And number three, when you put your phone on airplay mode, it automatically disconnects the Bluetooth. Now while the Bluetooth is disconnected, that is the only way for my phone to be connected to that speaker is through Bluetooth. And everybody's watching and then all of a sudden you start hearing that same music that we use for the protection. Now we all heard it, now this is when everything started getting a little odd inside of the makeup room. We're, so Ashley and everybody else started to go out of the room and then all of a sudden Sharon's ghost meter ended up going off and then we, you can hear an EVP in there say, sorry. But then you hear a loud bang, which is really weird because nobody even kind of reacted to the bang. You would think that they would react to it. And so 
So Ashley and Rebecca and everybody else went out of the room and in the other room in the main area where we thought we heard that music was Danny. Um, Danny was sitting there and he said no music was playing. So at this point we were all confused. We were not really sure where that music was coming from or how that music was even playing. If the speaker was off, my phone was on airplane mode, everybody else's phone was on airplane mode, and that means that the Bluetooth is completely shut off. Guys. That's that's the music playing. Why is the music playing? Yeah. Yeah. From your phone, the, first time. the phone's on lock. But that's like your phone. Right. I don't have my Bluetooth on. That's the only way that that music goes on. So if you guys see on the phone, it's kind of hard, but the Bluetooth is off. Yeah, it is. Yep. As far as when the whole group was in the back there where they heard the music, I stayed out in the main room and it was very quiet out there. I mean, your pin drop, I was the only one out there. They came out and asked me, you hear the music? I heard nothing. There was no music. It was dead still the whole time. Uh, the only thing that I saw possibly was while well, I was sitting there all by myself uh, over at the DJ stand over there, there was a light shining up onto the ceiling. And I saw just real quick a, like a shadow go across it. I don't know if it was my eyes or what. That's the only thing I actually saw out in that main big room. There's no music playing. I know, but but. I don't understand how it's playing with it. Ready? I don't have my Bluetooth enabled. Right. I turned it off after we were done. Yeah. There's no Bluetooth, so there's but no... there's no music. Dan said there was no music playing out here. What do you mean there was what no... We you guys, they, you guys, Dan said literally it's been silent up here. There was no music. Where did the music play from? Yeah, I heard that. No, but no, it was music. We all heard music. Yeah. music. I expected to come out here and have the music right, it was really loud. And we would have yeah, heard it so even closer if it was in the room we were in. Well, exactly. No, I thought it was going to be loud when I came out here. It's silent. As soon as we came out over there, there was nothing. There's nothing. We stopped hearing it as soon as we got down the hallway. Maybe it liked the music. Yeah. That we played. Should we play the music? Do you want to play the music and maybe do an EVP or? We could try that. We yeah. tried it in there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That one is. So. So Danny, nothing played in here.
heard, I think. And Dan, Danny said nothing played out there. Yeah. So then where... It was so obvious, and every single person in that room heard that. That was insanity. Mm -hmm. That is not So right now, Becca, Kareen, and myself are going back into the dressing room. We're going to do a few EVP sessions over there. Careful, guys, because... Woo! Just look down there. It's dark. <laughs> oh. Found in an article from Week and Weird, on January 21st, 2016, Carl Pfeiffer, along with his fellow resident investigators Connor Randall and Michelle Tate, were spitballing an idea they'd been kicking around since 2011. What if they isolated the noise from an SB7 spirit box? A device that forces sweeping radio signals into chunks of randomized noise, which many ghost hunters believe can be manipulated by spirits to send messages, and fed it into a person, making them the receiver. Let's see what happens when the shadow hunters try it. So we're having Greg do the Estes method. Loud enough. <laughs> So we got to give him like a couple minutes to get settled in and everything. Anybody. Anybody what? Do you need help? You want to go outside? I'm fine. I'm fine over here. That corner over there is awesome. It's really busy. No problem. When that happens, get up. No problem. No problem. No problem. Wait. The door opened. I, I, I bumped it. No. It was no, the, the door is closed. Somebody just walked in. I can't believe we didn't stop the I didn't see it. I saw you flip out and I thought you were seeing the black thing on the floor. Which is but I heard something over there. I, I, I heard something over there. And then I bumped this door. So there was a bump. I just heard something else. They're everywhere. They're all over. Don't move. Is that door open? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah.
supposed to turn right. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. Oh, 